share and subscribe. Thank you. In 1998, Audi named its small sports car after the legendary Isle of Man TT race. 20 years later, we're back to drive the latest incarnation on the island's speed limit free roads. It can be hard to think of an interesting, yet relevant place to take a car for a test drive. Luckily with the Audi TTS, the clue is in the name. Being given the freedom to drive as fast as you want is a rare commodity. Getting to do so legally on public roads is almost unheard of in the developed world. Germany's Autobahn is, of course, the notable exception, where sections of the smooth, wide highways are de-restricted, with multiple lanes of traffic where drivers, mostly, stick to strict lane-keeping rules and all go in the same direction. There is another place, though, that lets drivers take responsibility for their own actions on speed-limit-free sections of road. The Isle of Man, located in the Irish Sea between the UK and Ireland, is an independent nation that, as a protectorate of the British Crown, adopts the majority of its laws. With the exception of a national speed limit. Unlike its German counterpart, however, these roads are single-lane, two-way country affairs, often with stone walls to one side and a drop-off like a rolling hill on the other. Cars and motorbikes alike can, and do, travel as fast as they like, in both directions, taking blind bends and tail crests at whatever speed they see fit. Above all else, the island is known for the TT, the most famous motorcycle road race in the world, and one of the most deadly motorsport events in history. Over 270 lives have been claimed since the event started in 1907. Ten of those deaths have been in the last three years, and this year's race cost two riders their lives. It was in full knowledge of this that I waited for my turn to draw the 20 km section of the TT course, which had been closed especially for us, in the new 2019 Audi TTS Coupe. It was the very first time the island's authorities had permitted a section of the track to be closed to public traffic outside of the TT race, and I wasn't going to let those terrifying stats deter me from taking this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to drive part of this notorious road circuit without fear of oncoming traffic. I had driven on the island before. Last summer, I was fortunate enough to tag along on an event held by BAC, and I drove the single-seat madness that is the motto on those same roads. But this time, I wouldn't have other road users to contend with. This time, all I had to worry about was keeping myself on the road. This time I could take the racing line. The Audi TT does indeed get its name from the infamous race. Although Audi itself does not produce motorcycles, one of the four companies that were merged to become the modern Audi, each represented by a ring in the Marks badge, did. DKW won the race in 1938 in the lightweight 250 class. It's that heritage that Audi drew upon when giving their sports for it when it launched in 1998. And now, 20 years on, I'm ready to take the latest incarnation of the TTS on a stretch of the road that gave it its name. The powerful motorcycles that tear around these roads every summer can hit speeds well in excess of 170 mph, a bone-chillingly frightening idea when you consider that, unlike me, they don't have a cage of metal wrapped around them for protection. I wouldn't be hitting speeds anywhere near that in the TTS. With a 0-62 mph time of 4.5 seconds and an electronically limited top speed of 155 mph, my TTS with its 2.0 liter, turbocharged 4 cylinder engine, 302 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque would to be taking the course at half the speed of those insane machines. The narrow roads and obvious hazards along the way would, however, still make it a thrilling ride. Luck of the draw had my car the first to go up the section of the TT course, starting at the legendary Craig Knight Bop Hub and winding its way up into the roads of Sneakful Mountain, first taking the course in reverse before turning and coming back down. The famous pub is a great viewing spot on a tight 90 degree bend connecting two long straights and our first leg was one of those stretches. A perfect opportunity to test the standing start. Even the comfort suspension setting, which I engaged in the middle of my run through the car's individual mode, couldn't really be described as as soft. It kept the car pretty flat though in the twisties and gave a better sensation of weight transfer, aiding in the judging of the grit levels. Being able to dial in the parameters for the engine, gearbox, 
steering and suspension separately does allow you to configure the car to your exact preferences and indeed the driving conditions. For this drive, everything was in dynamic, with the exception of the slightly softer suspension. Heading up the mountain towards the bungalow and the memorial to TT legend Joey Dunlop is Windy Corner, where the road widens briefly, allowing you to take a sweeping bend completely flat, staying on the power all the way through. By now, the characteristics of the car were apparent, and my confidence grew to build more and more speed though the stunning landscape. Although the car gave me complete confidence, I knew that it would still be very much possible to outdrive myself if I didn't treat these roads with the respect they deserved.